this week on Carolina All Out. Hey, it's right here. Got it. There you go. Oh, nice rainbow trout. Oh, he's pretty. There he is, hooked up. We'll take it. That's what we're hunting for. There you, there you go. Bam. That's a good one. Right there. He's going to spool me. Yeah. He might. <laughs> nice brown trout. The autumn leaves. It's an awful good time to be in the mountains. Heck yeah. Awful good time to be in North Carolina. Absolutely. Huh? Fall colors and delayed harvest. This is Carolina All Out. <laughs> This week, the All Out crew heads west to the base of the Grandfather Mountain Escarpment to fish on Wilson Creek with Wildlife Resources Commission biologist Chris Wood. One of North Carolina's trout fishing crown jewels, the Wilson Creek supports both delayed harvest and hatchery supported waters and is a favorite destination for both resident and non-resident trout fishermen alike. We're here on the beautiful Wilson Creek in North Carolina, and I'm with District 8 fisheries biologist Chris Wood. And Chris, you do this all the time, so tell me how we're going to do this thing for these trout. All right, well, yeah, today we'll, you know, probably use a variety of, of methods. Uh, we're going to start off throwing some streamers, throwing some nymphs, and I think we should be able to get into fish. We have perfect conditions, cloud cover, it's about 55, 60 degrees. Well, you're going to have to show me because I haven't had a fly rod in my hand in a while. So anyway, it's gonna be fun trying to refigure this whole thing out. But I love fly fishing in North Carolina and on these delayed harvest creeks and rivers is just an awesome time. Oh, absolutely. I mean, temperatures are perfect. The conditions are perfect, beautiful surroundings. So I think we're gonna have a great day. There he is. Oh, had him. Miss him. Missed him. There, there he is, right here. Got it. There you go. All right, finally. That's a good fish. All right, good. Now you good. can let them run a little bit, slip through your fingers some, yeah. you know, and eventually try little... to get them on your reel if you can. Yeah, I see fish breaking all over this pool here. It's good. <laughs> what do we got here? Oh, yeah. Rainbow looks like, yeah. Oh, nice rainbow trout. Yeah, nice rainbow. I'm gonna show everybody this guy. Oh, he's pretty. This is one that you know all about, right? Yeah, this is a, you know, fish stock from Armstrong Fish Hatchery, rainbow trout. You know, this isn't one of our native fish. Our native fish are the brook trout. Right. But rainbow trout have been stocked in the U.S. since, you know, 1900. Right, so they're, they're a European transplanter. Uh, these are actually from the Pacific Northwest. Okay, oh, from the Pacific goes. Northwest. Yeah. We'll yeah, let him go there and talk about him, but uh, well, that was fun. Yeah, well, let's keep fun. catching them. Yeah, let's keep going at it. This streamer's working good. This is a good streamer hole, big, deep, slow yeah. moving holes. You know, nymphs really, this style of fishing really requires a nice natural drift. If you don't have that flow, sometimes it can be a little bit harder to get the fly to where they need to be. Right. Come on, fish. Mending the line to get it deeper. Then short little strips in. There he is. There you go. I believe this might be another rainbow trout as well. I like to try to get the line on the reel just to kind of get it out of the way. There he comes. Another rainbow trout. Looks like a twin brother of the other one we caught, doesn't it? Try to hold them close to the water if possible. There you go. On my trusty Prince nymph. 
very common Southern Appalachian trout fly that folks like to use. So I'm fishing a eight and a half foot four weight. Usually in these delayed harvest streams, especially Wilson Creek's a pretty big one. You know, a longer rod in the four to five, even six weight range is pretty popular. When I get up on a small stream, I'll gear down to six and a half, seven and a half feet. I have a little hand tied green woolly booger with a cone head bead on it. And then about a foot, foot and a half below that, I have a weightless prince nymph tied off. So this is a, a good way to fish these big holes that don't have a lot of current. So you can cover a lot of water, you can kind of get fish on reaction bites, and it's a good way to fish, like I said, these bigger type waters. Now when we get up to smaller waters where we're going to be throwing nymphs, we're going to be throwing dry flies and use some more traditional type approaches. Uh, but for this type uh, situation, I think, we're, I think we're doing what we need to be doing right now. We'll return to Wilson Creek after these messages. Carolina All Out is brought to you by AgriSupply. It's what's inside. Carolina Cooker, tools, cooks, legends. North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission, conserving wildlife since 1947. And by the North Carolina Marine and Estuary Foundation, pursuing world-class fisheries and thriving coastal economies. We'll be back with more Carolina All Out. All right, I say we hit another hole. Okay. And uh, see if we can find a few more fish. Sounds good to me. All right, I'm headed your way. Chris, I can see some fish breaking all along yep. down here. Yeah, this is a nice long run. I think with the current here, this would be a good spot to throw maybe some dry flies, maybe a a nymph dropped off of a dry fly. Uh -huh. So we can kind of have, you know, both of those areas of the water column covered. Well, let's get a couple more good yeah, casts down there here. where I'm gonna try to lay it right where I saw that last fish coming up. Use the current to Let it get a big and... bow in your line, put it in front of them, and then little bitty strips as it's hopefully get a, hopefully get a chaser. There he is. Hey. He's a runner too. Right there. there you go. There hey, we go. Jumps. Got some jumps. Beautiful fish. This one ran right at me after he gave me a good jump. Get my line up on the reel to get it out of my way. Another rainbow trout. This yeah. one's this one's pretty spunky. A nice 13 inch rainbow trout. Pretty fish. This one has a little more girth to it. Gave me a nice bite, a couple good jumps. We'll take it, that's what we're hunting for. Pretty fish. There you go, buddy. Enjoy the rest of your day. Go hide out for a little bit and recover. There you go. Just kind of raise that rod tip, you know, it to get it over that flowing water. There you, there you go. Bam. That's a good one. Right there. Right where you should have been. Now when you listen to your guide, you catch fish. <laughs> hey, that's yeah, a he good one. Yeah, he didn't play around. He's he giving you three jumps. Around. Four jumps. Yeah, he's going to do it up for us there. Let me get some uh, get this one, get the line tied Different on. people do it different ways and some oh, people don't like to bring the fish tight. in on the line, on the reel at all because you end up with a lot of slack. But uh, Yeah, yeah. I want him to stay. There we go. Get, there we go. He's spunky, isn't he? Yeah, he's got. He's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna spool me. Yeah, he might. <laughs> you know, another thing about fishing two flies is sometimes they'll go after one, they'll miss it, and, and they'll get, get hooked by that other one. Other one yeah, he's, that's a nice fish. Nice rainbow. Oh, yep. There oh. he goes. Sorry. <laughs> well, that was good. that wasn't that hard. No, let's do that about thirty more times. Yeah. There he is, hooked up. This one's a little bit smaller, but he's giving me a fight. He took the smaller fly off the back. Hey, a brown trout, our first brown. 
Browns are a pretty fish. They are. They're in an entirely different genus than rainbow trout. And these fish come from Europe originally, the German brown. Pretty fish. The little white lines that run down the fin sometimes, all that sort of stuff. It's just a really, really neat. And they get more pronounced as oh, they yeah. kind of get older, I think. It's they're just like really, the contrast is beautiful. Yeah, hopefully we're gonna find a big old bruiser brown. They get that butterscotch yellow yes. bottom on them and those big red spots and they're just, just a gorgeous animal. More North Carolina trout there fishing there after good these messages. Fish. That's a good fish. Yeah, this is a pretty fish. Yeah. The Fishbone Facts brought to you by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Free testing for chronic wasting disease is available at which of the following locations in North Carolina? Is it A, testing drop-off stations, B, servid health cooperator, taxidermist, or processors, C, NC wildlife check stations, or D, all of the above? Find out the answer after the break. Carolina All Out is brought to you by Farms and Land Realty. Selling land is what we do. Bear Creek Arsenal, performance through innovation. D&H RV and Marine, camp all year long. And by the Dixie Deer Classic, the South's premier sportsman's event. We'll be back with more Carolina All Out. Free testing for chronic wasting disease is available at which of the following locations in North Carolina? The answer is D, all of the above. To learn more about CWD and how it's impacting North Carolina's deer herd, scan the QR code below. Right now, right before this big bow gets in your line, give uh -huh. it a little flip. A little flip, well, yeah, yep. no man. And that'll just keep it in that zone just yeah, a little longer. And, you know, and you can manipulate those those mins to move it. Or, oh. There you go. There he is. There he yeah. is. Good fish. Yeah. That's a good fish. He's gonna take it right. Look, Look at, at him. That. This is a good fish. Yeah. This might be fish of the day. Oh, he's just gonna walk right up into the current. Uh, he's there. got shoulders. Yeah, he's got shoulders for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man, does that not feel good? Just the bend of that rod. Oh yeah. This ah, fish got shoulders on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Let him, I don't want to pressure him too I'm hard. I'm not sure. I thought I saw kind of a butterscotchy color when well, he rolled. It might Ooh, be a brown well, he's trout. He's got some serious, he's but moving He is definitely he's just, dominating he's, you right now. And he's not doing, he's going up river. Yeah. Right. They can't take it. You put that little bug in front of their face. Yeah, it just And looks, it's just sitting there, it's, it's subtle. It doesn't freak them out. I'm past the leader there. there we go. I'm yeah. On. Yeah, I need to get the leader out of there. That's there okay. We there we go. Now we think we got. Yeah. It's a pretty fish. Yep. Looks like. Yeah, we moved down there to him, maybe. Is he rolling? Oh, over yeah, again? this is a beautiful brown trout. Yeah, let's see if we can. I'm gonna try to not. Let me come around over here with you. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, he's got some real. He's marked up nice. Oh, look at that. This is a pretty fish. Yeah. Nice brown trout. See that nice yellowish colored bottom. They just match the autumn conditions out they here do. so well. I mean, good catch. Well, he took hey, it. I, I had somebody telling me what to do right. I don't know if I could have figured that out by myself, but I'll take it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh, oh <laughs> we're not going to be able to keep. Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry about that. to do it that. again there. But that's what you catch here on the rivers and creeks in North Carolina in the mountains. A little overcast day, but the, we can just see Perfect. the see the escarpments around us, the autumn leaves. It's an awful good time to be in the mountains. Heck yeah. Awful good time to be in North Carolina. Absolutely, huh? absolutely. <laughs> Ready to do that one again. Yes, sir, catch another one. Yeah. The boys decide to move down the creek to find some new territory, and they take some time to check out what's on the menu for the trout. Well, Chris, looks like you've got a few of the things that trout are eating here on this creek. Yeah, you know, they call it fly fishing for a reason. You know, there's really three major groups of bugs, the caddish flies, stone flies, and mayflies that uh, fly fishermen tend to focus on and that trout tend to focus on. You know, it's a real common thing for fly anglers to flip rocks and look in the stomachs of 
fish and just try to figure out what they're eating. And you know, you've probably heard that term match in the hatch before. And yep. that's something that fly anglers love to try to do, figure out what type of bugs are on the water in the water column and, and try to replicate those with the type of flies that they're using. Well, I noticed that whenever I reach down and pick up a rock, just about every time I do, there mm -hmm. you go. Yeah, So absolutely. there's food here. It doesn't look like it would be because it's so clear, mm -hmm. but this food is getting washed out from under yep. this, and all of a sudden now it's floating down and the trout are ready for it. Yeah, and the insects, you know, they, they have a life cycle where they live part of their life underwater, under rocks, and then they rise up to the surface, they break out of an exoskeleton, and they fly off. So trying to replicate all those stages is kind of the name of the game. I mean, that's what we're doing out here. Well, that's cool. Well, I'm ready to get back and see if we can match that hatch. Let's do it. I think we can. Looks like stoneflies are on the menu. So let's let's go with that. Okay. All right. Awesome. Carolina All Out is brought to you by DNZ Products, Catch Outdoors, Icon Coolers, Cash and Rods, Hunterbilt Customs, CWW Inshore Charters. Creek Boats, and by these fine sponsors. We'll be back with more Carolina All Out. Welcome to Appetite for the Outdoors. I'm Chef Paul Rhodes, and we're cooking with Carolina Cooker today. So what we're gonna be cooking today is the blueberry crisp. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some butter, we're gonna take some oatmeal, and we'll pour right in there, a little bit of flour, some cinnamon, and then brown sugar. If you don't have one of these mixers, you can use your fingers. So after you have your streusel all mixed up, you just kind of set that to the side. We're using the 16 and a half inch Carolina Cooker baking pan. So we're gonna go ahead and light this thing up. First, you're gonna to wanna to take your butter. You're gonna put it right here in the pan. Add in your brown sugar. You can add in your white sugar. Now we're gonna take our bourbon and add it right in there. Just like that. <laughs> put in your vanilla, cinnamon. We're gonna put in our cornstarch and add your blueberries, add our lemon zest, and then we're gonna go ahead and add our streusel to it. It is ready to go into the oven at 375 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes, or at least until the sides are bubbling up and everything's nice golden brown. Can't wait to try this. It smells fantastic. Can't leave any left behind there. Well, there we go. Blueberry crisp using Carolina cooker equipment. I hope you guys enjoy the recipe. It's a great summertime dish. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time on Appetite for the Outdoors. There you go. Right in the middle of the run. They're in the run, huh? How about that? Whoop. Oh, I just think I might have had a had a strike there. Yep, sitting in a feeding lane. Nice little brown trout. Nice. Hit it aggressively. Oh yeah. And you know. Even then you can see some color in him beyond just the yellows and the whatnot. It's just a cool. They're cool pretty look. fish. They are really match the autumn colors like we were talking about. It's those yellows and browns and reds that come out in them. Really pretty animal. There he goes. Can't harvest these fish quite yet. Not until June. So they get lots of opportunities to see other anglers and live to another day. See if we can find another one. I think we found the ticket. That was a bruiser. That was a, yeah, I saw the whole thing. <laughs> there he is. There you go. There you go. Now, did you detect him or are you just bringing up? I just Come. saw the slight movement of my fly line. Uh huh. I look at that connection between my fly line and the and the leader. Another brown Another trout. Brown? We'll take him. Yeah, he's awesome. There he is. That's a pretty fish. Yeah. He has a little more color than the last one. He sure does. And I can see greens in him now and that sort of stuff. Really, really neat. A love nice the love the scotch look. bottom. Yeah. Whoop. Oh, there he goes. 
With so much area to cover along Wilson Creek, Chris Wood decides to move to a different spot along the drainage and let Chris try another way to catch trout. Well, we changed positions, you can see different view right now. Beautiful, golly, this is beautiful. Uh, Chris brought a spinning reel set up here along, so we might even try that. This setup is called a trout magnet. It's a popular setup for delayed harvest fishing. You know, as long as you have a single hook artificial lure, you know, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And this is about as close as you can get to fly fishing with a spinning rod as you can. There. there he is. There he is. Good. <laughs> well, spinner fishing works. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at him go. Couldn't resist it. Nope, that's a good fish, too. Yeah. Another rainbow trout. Good looking fish. Oh, no, not quite yet. There, there we go. go. Nice fish. <clears throat> yeah, caught a little bit different technique here. Yeah. Chris had to resort back to what he knows. <laughs> Bobber and a cork. Hey, that's all Bobber right. cork and a hook. Rainbow trout here in the mountains of North Carolina. Beautiful colors of the fish and beautiful colors all around us. Looking right down that valley there. Fishing with Chris Wood, who's showing me all sorts of cool things about fly fishing. I've done a little bit of it in the past before, but it's always an interesting journey whenever you go with a fly fisherman because they, these guys know their craft so well. The delayed harvest program is, you know, our bread and butter of the trout program right now. People love it. Um, it expands the fishing opportunity straight through the winter, you know, stocking in October through June, catch and release, single hook, artificial lures only. A lot of different ways you can attack it, a lot of different ways to fish from the fly fishing purist down to, you know, fishing with a ugly stick from Walmart and some trout magnets, you know, the whole, the whole gamut can cover it. So anybody can enjoy it for sure. Well, my type of fishing for sure there. If you haven't tried this type of fishing, whether it be with a spinner or with the fly rod, you should come to the mountains of North Carolina. Such great programs. The Wildlife Resources Commission on their website has so much information about where to go and what you need to do to get there. So I would recommend that you give it a try. Chris is gonna show us some more about how to catch these guys and we are catching these beautiful trout in these crystal clear waters here in North Carolina. It's pretty awesome. Daisy. Ah!